Welcome to FedScoop TV and our series on advancing digital government in the cloud. I'm your host, Wyatt Cash, and today we're with Mike Brown. Uh, Mike is the CIO at the uh, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. Mike, welcome to the program. Thank you, Wyatt. Glad to be here. So we're looking at uh, uh, visions of the cloud, how we see the cloud helping agencies transform what they do. Um, tell us first, how do you envision cloud computing and maybe infrastructure or platform as a service helping to advance the work that your agency is doing for its stakeholders? Sure. Uh, well, let me first sort of describe a problem that, that we observe in many of our projects and programs. Uh, we're unable to deliver at the speed that our our mission operators would potentially like. So, uh, you know, I, I refer to this as delivering at mission speed or the desire to deliver at mission speed. And w when we examine programs that, that uh, are struggling to, uh, to, to produce uh, as quickly as we'd like, we often find that it is about the, you know, making infrastructure available to them in one fashion or another, whether mm -hmm. it's infrastructure we have to buy or infrastructure we have to provision uh, you know, through one of our existing providers. And, and the lead time to do that is inordinately long. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I would expect out of, uh, and am seeing uh, out of uh, you know, commercial cloud services uh, now is the, the ability to provision uh, you know, underlying infrastructure much more rapidly. Mm -hmm. and, and then at uh, a second tier of efficiency, you know, the ability to, to implement things like a, a DevOps pipeline, uh, which is well more suited to a, a commercial cloud environment, again, allowing us to produce much more quickly. So, you know, the broader benefit of cloud services, which, uh, you know, I frequently refer to as infrastructure as software, um, mm. uh, is speed for us. Mm -hmm. that, that's really what, what we hope to get out of it and uh, where we have had some uh, initial use and successes, that's what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Well, as CIO, I know you're not only looking at the technology lift, but also having to manage change management as part of the process of this. Tell us what steps you're taking or plan to take to help your operation and your IT team and the people they support make the adjustment to cloud services. Well, uh, you know, with any sort of uh, significant change, you know, the, the, there will be a, a community of, of people that will be, you know, immediately on board with the change and mm -hmm. some that uh, perhaps have reservations. Uh, in many places, we found that that our staff is immediately on board. They, you know, they they are tired of, you know, sort of the difficulties of, of provisioning infrastructure and dealing with infrastructure as as uh, we've known it for many years. Um, uh, certainly, our software development team is is more than ready to to embrace the cloud, and where uh, th there is any degree of resistance, and I would I would say at this point, there's very little. It is in those people that have had years uh, investing in, you know, the maintenance of on-premise circumstances, mm -hmm. and uh, that is where uh, we've uh, sort of turned it on its head. We've asked them to become our cloud brokers, mm -hmm. and sort of uh, uh, gotten them to commit to the concept uh, because it's largely their responsibility to get us there. Now, on top of that, we place, you know, good visionary leadership, and, mm -hmm. and in our case, the, uh, our chief technology officer uh, is helping lead the, the, the transformation to, uh, you know, more use of cloud services and, and helping um, get our operations staff, uh, you know, thinking in the right, uh, you know, direction mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, releasing some of those preconceived notions about how things might, might ought to work. Um, and, and I don't want to leave the security staff element out of this. So, mm. uh, you know, let's let's take an example today uh, of how we we handle security, much the same way we might handle software tests. But it, it, we, we produce a product, uh, we subject it to a variety of security stands, web inspect or DB inspect or something like that, and and then produce a list of things that are wrong with it, and it goes back for rework, and that cycle is is potentially repetitive, and uh, in a you know, cloud-enabled DevOps SEC environment, if you will, uh, you know, much of that testing is integrated into the, the, the construction pipeline. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as software rolls out, it is immediately tested as, as part of the, right. you know, the orchestration pipeline. So uh, what we have done, um, or at least attempted to do, is find uh, you know, something for everybody. There's something for operations that, that makes their life better. There's something for security that makes their life better. And certainly our software developers are, are clear on what makes their life better by 
by moving to the cloud. And that's how we're kind of managing the, the softer side of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the migration. Well, I appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about the transformative nature of how cloud can help. Um, you have um, some diverse customer groups between customs on one side, immigration on another, a lot of public facing and um, uh, opportunities to interact with your agency. How do you see cloud services helping improve or maybe even transform the experience that those different groups have? Well, uh, you know, very much uh, the same kind of answer to, to the first question that you posed. Uh, what we want to do is deliver for them faster, be more uh, fleet of foot, more mm -hmm. agile, if you will, um, in producing uh, you know, viable mission product. And uh, we just can't do that fast enough without the cloud. So the, our mission partners are very much on board with the concept. And in fact, uh, you know, left alone, they would be in the cloud uh, all by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, without, uh, without uh, IT uh, you know, organization support. So they're very much clear on the concept. So uh, what we want to do is, is produce capability as fast as we can for mm -hmm. them uh, and do it in a way that is, is highly repetitive. So you know, establishing a, a, you know, a very um, well thought out cloud based uh, you know, virtual model, uh, a well thought out development pipeline uh, that allows us to quickly produce uh, time after time after time. And, and again, the, the security element of that is, is if you establish mm -hmm. that at the fundamental infrastructure level, if, if your security constructs are, are um, well tied to you know, the virtual private cloud right. environment that you might set up uh, at, a, at an Amazon or an Azure or something, then all of that is repeatable, it moves faster, and, and that is the benefit to our mission operators. Mm -hmm. And lastly, um, uh, if you could change one or two things that um, would help facilitate a faster adoption of the cloud and getting your applications and everything else to work on the cloud, what might those be? In, and again, in the context of advancing digital government. Sure. Uh, well, uh, again, we're, we're, there's the hearts and minds piece of this is largely one. And, I, and uh, you know, if you'd asked me that question, say five or six years ago, I would have said, uh, you, you know, it's about security, right? Mm -hmm. That the security of the cloud is, a, or, or lack thereof, or perceived lack thereof, is uh, uh, really an inhibiting factor. I don't think that's the case anymore. Mm. I think with the FedRAMP program having mm -hmm. achieved, uh, you know, what it's achieved, the notion of, say, government community clouds where we can go uh, and, and operate with like mm -hmm. entities, uh, the notion of sovereignty in clouds mm -hmm. where we can, you know, as a law enforcement agency, we're, we're fairly sensitive to, uh, right. you know, uh, U.S. persons uh, in administrative roles and, um, uh, having our data, you know, processed and stored mm -hmm. in, in U.S. jurisdiction. So, uh, you know, the, the notion of sovereignty of clouds, standardization of, of infrastructure, community clouds have, have done a lot to break down any sort of um, perceptions of security mm -hmm. uh, circumstances. Uh, I, I will tell you, at, at this point, uh, the, the thing that we probably struggle with the most mm -hmm. is how do we rapidly you know, integrate our private networks with the commercial cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we've done a great job over the, the years and decades of, of sort of building security constructs around our private networks. Right. And, and now we want to integrate those networks with the, with the commercial cloud services. Uh, and uh, that, that, uh, that, that has proven to be, uh, you know, one of the longer poles in the tent for mm -hmm. our cloud implementation. Uh, we're working through that, but if I had to point out, uh, you know, one thing that has been nettlesome for us, it's that. It's not the hearts and minds at this point. It's mm -hmm. not the services in the cloud. Uh, it, it's just uh, the, that particular piece. Mm -hmm. Well, you're certainly not alone in trying to get that bridge to function fully, And uh, but we uh, appreciate your coming by to share some of the things that you're working on, some of the insights that you can share with our audience. and. Uh, we should continue good luck in uh, your ongoing migration up to the cloud. So. Well, thank you, Wyatt. Terrific. Well, uh, on behalf of FedScoop TV, I'm Wyatt Cash. Thanks for watching.